Hello maths fans, Dr Tom Crawford here from the University of Oxford bringing you my mega fave number. This is part of a very special maths YouTuber collaboration and we want all of you to join in at home. Full details of exactly how to do that will follow at the end of this video. The rules for selecting your mega fave number are actually quite straightforward. It just has to be a number which is greater than one million. So you'd think, being a mathematician, I wouldn't have too much trouble choosing one. Uh, well, uh, you'd be wrong. So most of my favourite numbers are, are pretty small. In fact, most of my favourite favourites are really, really small. And so I've kind of, sort of, maybe-ish cheated a little bit. Uh, so my hashtag mega fave number is 6.187 times 10 to the power of 30. Four, also known as 1 divided by the Planck length LP. So the question then becomes, well, what is the Planck length? The Planck length is a candidate for the smallest possible scale in the universe about which physicists can say something meaningful. So I should clarify at this point in the video, this is purely speculation. We do not know whether a minimum such length scale exists, but there's a general consensus amongst physicists that if indeed there is a smallest possible length scale in the universe, then the Planck length, LP, is a very good candidate for being that length scale. Now just pause for a second to think about what I am saying. If there is a smallest possible length scale in the universe, that basically means that the universe is pixelated. Credit to George Cham and his brilliant book, We Have No Idea, for this amazing phrase. The universe might be pixelated. Now at first this might seem a little far-fetched, but we know from quantum mechanics through Heisenberg's uncertainty principle that we can never know the exact location of a quantum particle. Or in other words, there does not exist information about the particle's location below some minimum length scale. And this could maybe be a clue that a smallest meaningful length exists in our universe. So if we run with this for a moment, and let's suppose we've convinced ourselves that a smallest length scale seems plausible, then why should it be the Planck length? And to answer this question, we actually consider some of the most fundamental constants in all of physics. We start with C, which of course represents the speed of light. So C is going to be the speed of light and being a speed, this will have units equal to uh, distance over time. Our next important physical constant is going to be H, which is Planck's constant and where the Planck length gets its name. So H, which is Planck's constant. This appears in quantum mechanics and you can think of it as the pixelation of energy because it talks about the quanta or packets of energy which can be absorbed by particles. So we have Planck's constant H and this has units equal to energy times time which is mass length squared time to the minus one. And finally, we have G, the universal gravitational constant, which of course appears in Newton's law of gravity, plus Einstein's field equations and various other places, no doubt. And this has units L cubed, M minus one, T, to the minus two. So we have three of the most, if not the most, 
fundamental constants of physics, the speed of light with units L t minus 1. We have the Planck's constant h with units mass length squared time minus 1. And we have the universal gravitational constant, which is g, and has units L cubed, length cubed, mass to the minus 1, time to the minus 2. Now the magic happens when we try to combine these three constants to get a length scale. So this is in fact a scaling analysis on these three variables. And what we want to do is using our knowledge of their units, we want to combine them in such a way that the mass will cancel out, the time will cancel out, and we're just left with a length scale. And that will be our Planck length L so the first step is going to be to remove the mass. So we only have mass in h and in g. So if we start by doing h multiplied by g, let's do it up here, then this, using a square brackets to represent the units, h times g, the units here, we've got an m and an m minus 1, so they will perfectly cancel. And then we're left with L to the 5 on top. And then we've got a H times G. We've got a T to the minus 1 times T to the minus 2. So that's T to the minus 3. So by multiplying Planck's constant and the universal gravitational constant, we actually get rid of mass from any of the units of this HG new constant. Now finally, we want to get rid of time, and we're going to do this using c, the last remaining constant. So c has l times t to the minus 1. So if we now divide by c to the power of 3, so c cubed on the denominator here, then this will give us on the bottom l cubed t minus 3, so the powers of time will perfectly cancel, and then we've got L to the 5 divided by L cubed, so this equals L squared. So we've almost got our length scale. We've got a length scale squared. So the final step is actually now to just take the whole thing to the power of 1 half, and then we have exactly a length scale. And so our final formula for the Planck length LP is going to be H Planck's constant times the universal gravitational constant G divided by the speed of light cubed all to the power of one half. And this is what we believe is a very good candidate for the smallest length scale in our universe. Now there's no real reason why we have combined these three constants as opposed to any others. But you could also argue that these are in fact the three most fundamental of the fundamental constants in physics. We have the speed of light, also known as the speed limit of the universe, beyond which nothing can travel any faster. We have Planck's constant, which you can interpret as the pixelation of energy in terms of how energy is absorbed. And you have the universal gravitational constant, which of course is everything to do with gravity and relativity. So we have pretty much the top three physical constants. And as we've shown, the only way you can combine them using their units to get something that has the units of a length is in this form. So the Planck length is the only way to get a length scale using these three constants. Now, we still don't really know what this number means. We don't really know if it has a meaning, but the fact that it is possible, it is certainly within the realms of possibility that this number, the Planck length, is the smallest meaningful distance in the universe 
is pretty amazing. And this is why one divided by the Planck length to make it big. One over LP, also known as 6.187 times 10 to the power of 34, is my hashtag mega fave number. Thank you everyone for watching. Please do remember to subscribe to my channel if you've enjoyed this video. And also remember to take part in the Mega Fave Numbers collaboration. All you have to do is pick your own favorite number that's greater than a million, record a video talking about that number, and then if you upload it to YouTube with Mega Fave Numbers in the title, and also use the hashtag Mega Fave Numbers, if you do this before the 2nd of September, your video will automatically be added to the Mega Fave Numbers playlist along with the rest of us. I look forward to seeing what you come up with. See you soon.